Okay, hello everyone. Uh, nice to see you all again. And I would like to start uh, today's lecture series. And I would like to introduce uh, today's lecturer. So for today, uh, our, I'd like to introduce our lecturer, Professor Edmund Asian Kim. So actually you will all well know Professor Kim. Mm -hmm. Professor Kim is one of the most accomplished doctors in the field of nuclear medicine cancer research. And he has served as a tenure professor at MD Anders Cancer Center. And he is currently a invited professor at Seoul National University Medical School. So this is a very good for us because he can uh, deliver us a lectures and he has dedicated and is still dedicating to cancer research and training of young medical professions. So today, uh, Professor Kim will deliver us a lecture regarding imaging of uh, urinary system. So please welcome Dr. Edmund Kim. Thank you very much, Professor So, for the nice introduction. Hello, everybody. I hope you keep well and happy. I'm going to talk to you about the overall imaging aspects of uh, genital urinary system. Uh, as you know, uh, nuclear medicine uh, uh, studies uh, generally provide uh, functional and metabolic information. And the, uh, in GU system, we do have a lot of uh, uh, functional problems. So uh, uh, I'm going to rapidly run uh, overall imaging uh, for the clinical uh, problems. Oops. Uh, <clears throat> as you know that the kidneys are in retroperitoneal space, uh, as you see on this uh, diagram on cross-sectional uh, imaging, uh, kidneys uh, uh, way in the back, and adrenals uh, uh, just above uh, anterior medially, and then uh, we have a pancreas. Okay, and then uh, in front of pancreas there is a lesser sac and some omental omentum uh, is around that space, and then. Uh, we have a spleen and the liver and stomach. So uh, uh, as I mentioned in my lectures of anatomy, uh, we have to use a uh, space. So uh, there's a perihepatic space. And the, now uh, around the kidneys, that's called peri, sort of renal space, peri renal space. Peri means a surrounding. And then anterior, posterior side is a para. So anterior, para renal space, posterior, para renal space. So uh, if there's any nodule or whatever things, uh, you have to describe precisely where uh, that uh, nodule is located based on this uh, uh, name of spaces. And certainly in pancreatic cancer or disease, we have to look around the peripancreatic space that's uh, uh, in the uh, anterior perirene uh, pararenal space here. Yeah. Okay, uh, basically we have also lots of, if you go down a little bit, then you have a mesentery. It's another like an apron type uh, peritoneal uh, uh, tissue and has a lots of fat and also lots of uh, vessels. And so uh, uh, if there, uh, there is any peritoneal seeding or peritonitis, you expect to see some kind of hazy, uh, fatty tissue on CT. Uh, fat density is dark generally, but if there's uh, some haziness, uh, then you have to think about peritonitis or peritoneal seeding. Uh, further lower down uh, in pelvis, uh, in male, you see uh, seminal vesicles and then uh, some rectum 
there is a petty red color uh, cheese and, and the petty uh, red color uh, sort of lymph nodes are here. So uh, you have to watch any nodular uh, lesion. Around. And uh, obviously this uh, uh, pelvic wall has a less uh, vessel as well as lymph nodes. So you look for lymph nodes. So uh, in the female, obviously the uterus is right in the middle and the bilateral ovaries. Uh, so the, uh, because of mobile structure, it, uh, the position is often uh, variable uh, individually, but always look for a uh, ovary on both sides. Uh, and then uh, uh, a ligament, uh, this uh, anterior is around the ligament uh, uh, tumor often spreads through this uh, ligaments. And then uh, there is a tiny vessel that's called inferior epigastric uh, artery and vein. So on CT, uh, you have to look for this uh, inferior epigastric artery vein. If the lymph node is above this uh, inferior epigastric uh, vessel, then that's a uh, uh, external ilia. If the nod, uh, lymph node is uh, below this uh, inferior epigastric vessel, that's an uh, inguinal lymph. So we divide inguinal versus external uh, ilia based on this uh, vessel, inferior epigastric artery and vein. In the uh, uh, breast augmentation uh, by the plastic surgeon, they use this vessel. Okay, so what well, this vessel is important to recognize on CT. Obviously, a sciatic nerve is right here behind the, this uh, acetabulum and the sciatic notch here. So uh, if there's any mass or things, it compress or so, uh, patient uh, develops sciatic pain. Okay, so this is a, is a, a femoral uh, artery vein. Vein is always a medial, so uh, it's a uh, uh, lymph node is a uh, lateral to artery, so N A V Y. So, so that's the uh, N A V. Lymph node is uh, on the uh, lateral side. Okay, and uh, so uh, this is a uh, uh, course uh, called the sac between the rectum and uh, vagina. So uh, normally there is uh, some fluid. But if there's a more than normal amount, uh, you have to think about ascites, other things. So this is a, uh, anatomy you have to always recognize. Now, on the side, obviously, uh, you look at a spine and some, uh, uh, but uh, uterus, anterior uterus, bladder, and this, a rectum here. So this uh, space is called the sac. So right here, called the sac, okay? A sigmoid here. And this, uh, again, uh, this is a stomach pancreas between uh, this uh, uh, here. Uh, this is the omentum is uh, front and then posterior to this uh, uh, sort of a lesser sac, lesser omentum here. And the bottom here is uh, this uh, mesentery, this mesentery. And uh, so, so these are all important landmark uh, in the pelvis. Oh, uh, again, uh, you have to uh, look at all this uh, relationship. This uh, female and the male prostate is right here. So prostate urethra uh, runs uh, in the center, through the center of a prostate. So prostatectomy, radiation, all hit this uh, a, uh, uh, prostate urethra that can make a complication as a leaking kind of things. And the rectum here. So bladder, usually here, wall is a thin usually. And uh, uh, if it's not distended, uh, normally it's uh, quite a, a thick, but any nodular thickening, you have to uh, worry about cancer or papilloma or some neurogenic bladder. Okay, now in kidney, okay, if you are getting older, older, uh, kidney tissue, cortical tissue becomes shrunken, just like a brain, same brain, same. 
and obviously the surface is also is not smooth, uh, and then uh, is often develop a, a cyst, a benign cysts. So inside the kidney, as you know, the cortex, the medulla, and then the pelvis. Okay, there's the renal uh, medulla is called pyramid, uh, pyramid, and so uh, arteries run and the branches uh, also it's articular arteries uh, around he here and the uh, veins comes okay drain here so renal pelvis here a ureteral pelvic junction is right here so when you, the patient is lying down it will make a hump here but uh, uh, okay the functional unit of kidney is right here Okay, so in between uh, pyramids, there is a call, uh, column of Bertini. Bertini. So sometimes it makes a little bump here. So here, a little bump here. Okay, arteries, as I mentioned, uh, arteries branching and makes an arcade on the top of pyramids. Yeah, so that just uh, here, uh, uh, branch arterial comes in and efferent, efferent uh, through the glomerulus. I will show you more details. And just like uh, in the brain, brain uh, branching, just like, uh, you know, so, circle of Willis, uh, and then finally this puffering arterial, similar pattern in the kidneys. So uh, brain kidneys are connected in many ways. So there is an axis. So a lot of kidney diseases often also relate to brain diseases. So the kidney is a, a third important organ in our body system. I believe brain is the most important, second is heart, and third is kidneys, and maybe fourth is liver. So kidney is so important, particularly when you are getting old, all kind of uh, diseases affect renal function. Okay, so uh, normally uh, you have a on uh, retrograde uh, sort of urogram we call contrast. We introduce retrograde and it delineates renal pelvis, our collecting system. Very nice, sharp here, very nicely. Okay, pyramids here. Yeah, yeah, this is a uh, and then uh, you can hear, okay. So uh, there is a little some fullness or uh, ectasia. If uh, we uh, give too much contrast to things and uh, some anatomical variation as well. Now, uh, often we use ultrasound uh, because it's a uh, uh, cheaper, easily available, etc. So ultrasound echogenicity we see here. The cortical echogenicity is a little bit, uh, there's a dark, the medulla, all vessels, all things show more echogenicity, okay? But in color Doppler, we have a lot of uh, arcade vessels, all things, you have a more colorful things in the cortex here. And, and then more color Doppler will often show artery veins, and now using new uh, bubble contrast, uh, you can delineate the cortex better things. Okay, and uh, sort of uh, another uh, detail, anatomy, uh, you can see cortex, the medulla, some vessels, and this uh, Doppler show uh, arteries, vessels, uh, branches. And now there is uh, also new techniques sort of uh, uh, arterial uh, wave form, and uh, it can make uh, all register of index, etc. This ultrasound, uh, and this uh, uh, using some contrast agent, they can make a so-called uh, you know uh, ultrasound uh, sort of uh, uh, this uh, time and this uh, echogenicity curve and normally it goes to arterial fast to drain the things yeah okay and there's also elastography ultrasound can show colorful images based on elasticity 
So this has been developed uh, 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 initially for the uh, evaluation of hepatic uh, fibrosis to uh, prevent further progress of hepatic cirrhosis. But now also this applied in the uh, renal uh, fibrosis. So uh, ultrasound uh, uh, can be useful. But uh, as you know, ultrasound uh, techniques still uh, depend on individual operator. So it's a good experience, a good uh, people knows and makes a good picture, but uh, it's not easy to interpret by others. Now, uh, this uh, CT is straightforward. Uh, using contrast agent, uh, we can have a non-contrast and then uh, initially uh, you can delineate cortex and then uh, you can have a draining part here. So uh, it's just like uh, any other contrast agent uh, in arterial capillary and venous phases. And then uh, obviously uh, draining, uh, you can see on uh, CT and this is uh, called duplex. So you can see uh, up uh, ureta or all the way down is double. It's an anatomical variation. It, you see quite often uh, this kind of duplex uh, ureters. And the, uh, there's also anatomical common uh, uh, we see as horseshoe kidneys. Horseshoe kidneys, uh, you can cross midline on this uh, uh, MRI. And also there's a cross kidney, one kidney is crossed and attached to the other things. So it's the two kidneys together in one place. And certainly there is also hypoplastic. Uh, it's tiny, just like a, a little adrenal mass type. And the a functioning agent uh, nuclear scan show sort of uh, atrophic, uh, minimally functioning uh, right kidney things. And the uh, MR certainly can show details of uh, uh, cortex, uh, um, uh so they can measure the exact uh, the thickness of cortex uh, in uh, a, uh, any chronic renal disease, you expect to see thin cortex is shrunken. This cortical measurement uh, is important. And certainly MR can uh, have all different mm, sort of uh, pulse sequences uh, that will make a different uh, diffusion uh, weight images, a uh, macromolecular movement. So cellularity uh, can be shown on this uh, diffusion imaging. ADC is the same thing, but it's the opposite signals and makes the numbers. And flip angle, color imaging, T to start imaging, and just like a brain, certain uh, tractography uh, can uh, make uh, this kind of, uh, yeah, maybe uh, neuronal signals uh, to communicate uh, among all the cells. And the uh, certainly MR can also make a, a, a perfusion without introducing contrast with without things. And then you can see all this uh, uh, details of anatomy things, but obviously MR uh, technique is not still practical because of uh, expensive and time consuming or then also a lot of claustrophobic uh, patients. And the CT is still main tool for evaluation uh, urinary system in general. Uh, patient complaining of abdominal pain start with the CT generally to look for stone. Radiopaque stone is common, so uh, uh, you can see uh, here, here, here. Certainly, radio uh, uh, opaque uh, stone. Uh, uh, is easy, but the uh, radiolucent stone uh, cannot be shown uh, without contrast agent. Uh, let's see. The ultrasound also show uh, post-acoustic shadow things. So any uh, 
high, you know, sort of metallic things will show. So, so ultrasound can also, but precise location things the city much easier. And the uh, certainly classification uh, has a lot of chronic inflammation, certainly this kind of unusual papillary uh, classification, uh, nephrocarcinosis uh, in certain oxalosis, the medullary sponge kidney can all show also multiple classifications. So those are the things that you often see. Uh, the, uh, nowadays, we don't see much uh, this kind of focal bacteria nephritis, but in old days, uh, uh, we see the subcortical small sort of radiolucent density that's representing microethesis. And certainly uh, sometimes uh, this kind of gas uh, uh, can be produced by certain bacteria. Uh, that's a very you know, bad prognosis. Oops. Oops. Uh, pyronephritis, glomerular nephritis, uh, glomerulus uh, uh, can have an inflammation, so that's a glomerular nephritis. Pyronephritis is generally from a urinary tract infection is coming from the lower down bladder, ureter, uh, all the way up to the uh, you know, kidneys. So, but they are manifestations uh, are similar. In chronic kidneys are small, uh, in acute a little uh, sort of a, a, a density changes in the cortex. Uh, and if, if there's an abscess formation, it will make a, a focal nodular decrease densities. Uh, multifocal uh, can, multifocal pyronephrosis can, okay, here upper, Oh, kidney and lower kidney. Uh, here. It's sort of an ill-defined uh, lower density. Okay, but that's all you can see. But this cortex uh, uh, is still maintained because this acute process. Uh, emphysematous. Uh, you know, if there's gas produced, that's called emphysematous. And the uh, uh, often renal cell carcinoma with the perinephric fat. Uh, could look like like this, okay? But they're generally certain, you know, again, low density, mass-like things, and you look for any uh, sort of a, a gaseous uh, low density outside the kidney uh, for emphysematous. And this is another special pyronephritis with all this, uh, let's call it xanthogranulomatous. So very rare, but uh, involving uh, sort of, it has a lot of lipid uh, macrophages. So that's why it's a low density things. It's a uh, rare cases, but they show. Now, uh, kidney has uh, many nodular things. In uh, other, you'll see almost any uh, sort of uh, this kind of nodular densities on CT. Okay, and so uh, we, we're using a contrast agent. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, you have to look at uh, uh, all three initial sort of a cortical medullary phase, arterial phase, and then the capillary phase, nephrographic phase, and the excretion venous phase, and see how they change it that will characterize abnormalities. Now, in uh, renal mass, uh, the most common is a cyst, okay? Uh, if it's not a uh, clear cut cyst, uh, well, if there's a fat, fatty density, that's a common angiomyolipoma. But uh, otherwise, you all have to think about certainly tumor category. Uh, in that, uh, you have a uh, Ah, uh, is a uh, primary renal cell or a transitional cell, but the lymphoma and also even metastasis, you have to think about it. 
uh, but the in the mass and renal cell is still a major cancer. Uh, in benign is oncocytoma is uh, uh, often seen. It has a high density unlike other tumor, so it's easy. And there's a, even leukemia involving uh, a kidney makes a, a nodule or a mass. Uh, in general, less than three centimeter is called nodule. Uh, greater than three centimeter is called mass. Okay. Okay. Here in the uh, okay, it's a uh, uh, in English that's called ball type lesion. That's uh, usually renal cell, angiomyelitis, lipoma, oncocytoma, metastasis, lymphoma. But bean type, this inside bean type, the transitional cell, a certain type renal cell, lymphoma, metastasis, infection, in, infarction. Okay. So, uh, uh, ball versus a bean sounds, uh, but uh, practically it's not easy. But the, this is what they initially describe. Okay. So, uh, in general, Okay, uh, benign versus a malignant. So in malignant, obviously, hypervascular, uh, generally. In renal cell is very hypervascular, They're often uh, infiltrating renal vein. Uh, in uh, 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 traditional cell carcinoma, see the renal cell uh rarely makes a hydronephrosis okay uh but in this uh, transitional cell or nowadays we call urothelial cancer it involves or uh, pelvis renal pelvis or collecting so it makes a hydronephrosis that's a big difference any bulky tumor in any place you have to think about uh, lymphoma Anything bilateral, bulky, you know, uh, mass, that's a lymphoma. Okay, uh, metastasis uh, is uh, often uh, multiple, okay. Uh, sarcoma is also very vascular, particularly uh, liposarcoma. Uh, uh, most common uh, sarcoma in adult is a malignant histio, uh, Fibroma, so MFH, malignant fibrous histiocytoma. That's the most common. Second is a liposarcoma. Uh, mixoid liposarcoma is mostly common in extremity, extremity. But uh, other types are more inside the body. Okay. Now, in children, certainly nephroblastoma, so called Williams tumor, is the most common, most common. Uh, that's uh, just a, a huge mass, usually huge mass. It uh, can also infiltrate renal there, but uh, uh, just a huge mass uh, and some vascular, hypervascular mass, that's a uh, Williams tumor in children. Now, other than that, okay, you can think about, first you have to rule out pseudo tumor, okay? As I say, column of Bottini, some certain uh, fetal ablation, certain scars, bumpy things. So that's why we use a DMSA nuclear scan. If uh, CTMR shows some kind of uh, bumpy ablation scar, you worried about some nodular uh, in the cortical area, then DMSA, functional agent, can delineate and make the differential diagnosis easier. Now, if there's any fairly dark, uh, density and that's uh, angiomyelitis. Certainly, uh, lipoma is another fat tissue. Uh, oncocytoma has a central scar, but generally it shows uh, increased density rather than decreased density uh, on non contrasting So, adenoma is rare, but uh, it's uh, uh, just like a uh, 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 liver adenoma versus uh, hepatocellular carcinoma is impossible to separate on CT. Same thing, adenoma versus renal cell carcinoma is very difficult. Uh, only this is a 
uh, usually small, less than three centimeters. Hmm? Three centimeters. So uh, size is uh, usually when uh, we diagnose a renal cell, usually bigger than five centimeters. Uh, so uh, is uh, by staging seven centimeters greater is stage three. Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a papilloma is a rare, uh, but multifocal is characteristic. Yes. So uh, again, the non-contrast enhancement is a cyst. Fatty angiomyoliform. Uh, and enhancement is a renal cell or other cancer. So uh, uh, usually uh, we can separate fairly well. Now, again, uh, okay, that's the uh, same thing. So uh, you can see various patterns. Uh, so uh, uh, anything ill-defined, uh, enhanced mass, you have to think about renal cell. But see the transitional cell involving uh, either renal pelvis or medullary, so it makes us some dilatation of a collecting system uh, usually, but in this case, not much. But renal cell never show hydronephrites in the cortical, but infiltrating. Is defined. That's okay. Lymphoma usually bulky diffuse. So lymphoma bulky. Metasa usually multiple. Pyelonephritis, as I show earlier, is a ill defined low density, similar to like a lymphoma things. The pyelonephritis, multiple things. Infarction is a shrinking, is a vascular uh, disease. So it's a kidney it becomes small and usually often uh, sort of a, a, a triangular shape. Sharply out. So now there are several uh, clear cell is about most common, seventy percent. So uh, very vascular, expensive, bumpy. Here, uh, yeah, enhanced. This this is uh, what we usually see mostly. Oh, it's, uh, Okay, the popularity is next is a 10, 15 percent. This case it doesn't show uh, much hypervascular, but it's a multifocal bilateral. That's the popularity. Okay, chromophobe is next common. That's a five percent. Okay, uh, so uniform, almost like a benign, but sometimes central scar. Uh, but uh, we have to differentiate from benign oncocytoma. Okay, small uh, renal cell is very difficult to handle, small, small like this. Yeah, certainly, you know, the PET scan doesn't show this kind of thing. So it's a small, less than one centimeter. And on uh, the diffusion imaging, other things uh, show, uh, but ultimately, uh, and the biopsy. Yeah. Uh, okay, cystic, there is also cystic renal cell. This is kind of things. So any septation, any irregularity in the world, you have to worry about cystic renal cell, irregularity. That's uh, And so uh, 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 oncocytoma sometimes uh, is a very vascular but central scar. Uh, here, but the renal cell can do similar things. So that's a very difficult to separate. And yeah, so uh, this uh, is a benign tumor uh, fairly well on uh, uh, here, here, well defined, but uh, that's a uh, similar, you know, the renal cell, particularly chromophobe type. So uh, this kind of things. I uh, need a biopsy. So again, uh, you know, we use uh, uh, diffusion imaging and then a uh, certain contrast agent, but uh, as I said, it's not uh, easy. It's uh, particularly a small, some kind of slight heterogeneous uh, renal cell, uh, but on diffusion, it show high, signal intensity. Uh, ADC map will show rather decreased signal intensity. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 
another vena cell, a little bigger, bumpy, it, it, it's uh, compressing, okay, the renal pelvis, but no, oh, you know, hydronephrosis with this size of mass. Because it's arising from renal parenchymal tissue. On the other hand, the uh, urothelial tumor arising from uh, this uh, epithelial wall of uh, urinary tract. So it's the compressing, obstructing uh, urinary tract. So that will make a, a hydronephrosis. Now, uh, re renal vein, you have to recognize renal vein all the time. Uh, you know, this is the MRI. You can see this uh, a renal vein here, here. So the tumor often spread through renal vein and inferior vena cava and go to the lung. So always look at uh, uh, such a, uh, pathways. Okay. So re here, uh, mass, renal cell, and then look at a renal vein and inferior vena cava and the lung. Long. Almost all renal cell goes to the lung. It's just a matter of time. So uh, in five to seven years, almost all cases I experience uh, develop lung metastasis. So this is a quite a you know, large tumor and then the lymph node erythroperitonia. Uh, so uh, here, aorta inferior vena cava. So it's a pre-aortic lymph node. This side, the peri between aorta cava, that's a description, but at least you have to say this is retroperitoneal yeah? at the level of this kidney, that's a usually L2, 3. Yeah. Okay, small, tiny cystic, this kind of things is very difficult to diagnose. Uh, small cystic renal cell. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a certain hemorrhagic to also renal cell. Uh, yeah, that's a, so uh, uh, it's a multiple sequential, okay, MR imaging, so you characterize that, uh, but anything heterogeneous is a hallmark of any malignancy because of inside there's a lot of combination of hemorrhage, infection, necrosis, etc. Uh, so uh, there's also called cystic nephroma. Nephroma is a similar name of renal cell cancer. But this is a very you know, well-defined cystic, but there's some internal septation or things. This also uh, makes us some worried. Cystic nephroma. Okay, uh, now you know there's a whole body MR system things. And so uh, we can evaluate the whole body. There is a, a mass in the right uh, buttock, this gluteus. Uh, gluteus um, uh, uh, muscle uh, with a certain heterogeneity center. Okay, and certain lesion here, uh, here. So the whole body MR uh, has a good value, but it's uh, still not more expensive and time consuming compared to whole body path system. Uh, this uh, urothelial, as I said, uh, this. Uh, Studying renal pelvis, any urinary system, all the way from bladder, ureter, and this uh, uh, kidney, this all same one system. Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, has a uh, uh, relatively poor uh, sort of a prognosis compared to renal cell. And so uh, on imaging, any mass lesion often makes uh, some hydronephrosis or hydroureta. Okay, here is a sort of you know, dilated the uh, renal pelvis of the mass here and some uh, uh, dilatation of collecting systems. And the contrast enhancement here on MR here, uh, pel pelvic area enhanced. Uh, so William Sima, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, most common that's, uh, in pediatric uh, children as a very large and slight heterogeneous and uh, classification, uh, that kind of thing. 
And so uh, uh, in children, you also think about neuroblastoma. Uh, neuroblastoma, 75% is calcified, uh, but the Williams tumor doesn't show the calcification. So Williams tumor often involves the bone, but this goes to the liver uh, first instead of bone. So and any bulky tumor in the retroperitoneum uh, or a kidney, all thing is uh, you have to always think about uh, lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma here, and the uh, uh, kidney can be inf or involved by lymphoma diffusion. Uh, leukemia also can involve in kidney is a little bumpy and then decrease. Uh, signal mass lesion multiple here. Uh, so uh, it's a bilateral it's a nature, either uh, infiltrative with the leukemia, lymphoma, that kind of things. And the retropathy, lymph node certainly is nature. So uh, any uh, density of fat on non contrast, that's a angiomyolipoma uh, here. Uh, on the MI, you can characterize also on fatty tissue things. So metastasis, uh, certainly in retroperitoneum, but here also metastasis, almost like a, a renal cell carcinoma. So uh, uh, certainly common lung cancer, breast cancer, but also GI cancer, melanoma can spread to the uh, kidneys. Okay. The so melanoma basically goes to every place. Now, uh, certainly uh, hematoma and uh, subcapsular hematoma in non contrast, no contrast, but you high density, that's a uh, uh, hemorrhagic uh, sort of. Uh, so, uh, it's certainly uh, trauma uh, will do this kind of. And then certainly a leaking of a contrast, that kind of thing, so it's a trauma. Uh, in fact, there's certainly shrunken and some kind of uh, ill-defined the uh, uh, cortex, this, uh, all the um, vessels are blocked things. Now, in cystic huh, lesion, uh, we see most common, you have a a solitary or multiple. So uh, in a single, uh, simple cyst, we call uncomplicated cyst. It's just a very uh, 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 well-defined things, uh, no enhancement at all, things like that. Uh, certainly other cystic lesion, uh, like uh, echinococcal, uh, some cystic, uh, you know, Renal cell or hyperaproma uh, or abscess, there's always some uh, uh, kind of uh, little uh, sort of uh, septation or ill defined margin, uh, that kind of things. So, multiple, uh, you can think about uh, polycystic kidneys, sort of echinococcal parasitic disease, that kind of unusual things. So, here, very well defined and uniform density. That's a simple, uncomplicated cyst. And the uh, a parapelvic cyst uh, often skid compress a little dilatation of uh, renal pelvis. And then uh, so it's a simple cyst, well defined, and some uh, complex little echoes inside, a multiple polycystic. That's what they often see on ultrasound. Now, CT, complicated cyst will show some septation, some nodula, or uh, some hmm, hyper, uh, sort of either calcified or uh, hyper intense, uh, you know, capsule, etc. These are all complicated. <clears throat> MR also show. You cystic, multiple cystic, some uh, heterogeneity. And this kind of numerous uh, cystic, that's a polycystic kidney. So this are uh, usually is uh, congenital things. And, and sometimes inside the hemorrhage on non-cancer CT. 
uh, para uh, pelvic cyst, cyst. Okay. here, here, okay, cyst. Okay, cystic nephroma, I'll show you in this. Oh, the benign usually is a smooth benign. Uh, so this, uh, yeah, polycystic kidney on ultrasound, also you can see on uh, MRI, multiple cells. Mm -hmm. This one. So this is a small, tiny, it's difficult, is a cyst or a solid, some, because a partial volume average, unless you have a very thin section, CT or MI, uh, you may have a misleading, but ultrasound with contrast, you'll see good delineation of a simple cyst. So on this a CT MI, you worried about small, Oh, renal cell, but uh, sometimes uh, we ask uh, CT now with the uh, ultrasound with contrast, no problem. So without biopsies, that's a simple cyst. And uh, again, it's a sort of a pseudo uh, cyst, uh, column of botini, that's a common things, but the enhanced uh, contrast study show again, very well, the MI is a, uh, T2 show just a uh, fluid collection, so easy. So uh, uh, again, uh, uh, certain uh, questionable things, you have to utilize all imaging uh, things before or you biopsy things, and then you figure it out. So there is a Bosnia classification. The uh, category one through five is uh, four, five is uh, sort of uh, suggesting malignancy. And one, two is just a simple system in between probable benign things like that. So in that uh, you have to recommend just a follow up three months, six months to see any changes. But category three, four, recommend the surgery. Uh -huh. That's a uh, the usual approach. So uh, uh, again, multiple cysts, and then uh, sometimes uh, we use nuclear imaging to see the functional uh, aspects. And uh, so, uh, okay, uh, a little more details of uh, anatomy uh, inside kidney. Uh, Okay, as I mentioned earlier, just above the uh, pyramid, there is a glomerulus, glomerulus. In glomerulus, okay, uh, <clears throat> after arcade, this artery branching, branching, that's the afferent arterial coming here. And then it comes out, efferent arterial here. Okay, but. And then uh, here, this is a called henny of roof, this is a proximal, and then this time, this time. Okay, and then it's a draining, collecting too. So uh, this, uh, this one is a functional unit, glomerulus and the uh, afferent and efferent. So uh, uh, if there is any blockage, or uh, uh, narrowing of this uh, vascular system, you end up uh, uh, seeing high blood pressure, hypertension, renal vascular hypertension. So not necessarily blocking main renal artery, but any branch will affect angiotensin renin systems. So that will make a uh, hypertension. So in the kidney, uh, as you know, based uh main function is waste the filtering out waste product filtering, filtering. and certainly uh, clean the blood to remove uh, uh, certain extra fluid uh, so uh, and another important thing is, uh, is to keep our body chemicals in balance chemical so uh, that's why kidney is so important all minerals are tiny amount in our body system but minerals 
uh, are essential in making enzymes and hormones. And just like a vitamin, uh, our body does not making uh, minerals or vitamins. It ha we, you have to uh, get it from food things. And uh, so it's uh, important. And certainly another important is that the uh, uh, erythropoietin is produced in the kidneys. Uh, therefore, if there's a damage of kidney or the disease, then you end up having anemia. So uh, it, the kidney has a function to control red cell and blood pressure. That's a very particularly when you're getting old, you have uh, some degree of uh, vascular disease. Yeah? So uh, if a kidney is not uh, functioning normally, you have uh, this uh, hypertension and some other angio, uh, sort of micro angiopathy. That's uh, now most uh, common basis of all kinds of chronic disease, including dementia. So again, in that unit, glomerulus, okay, afferent arterial brings us some material, uh, okay, and filtered, uh, filtered, okay, and the, uh, through afferent arterial it goes here. So 20% is filtered, okay, and there's a, a, a reabsorption from uh, tube, okay, in certain, I will mention something. But this is a tubular cell, okay? So uh, uh, technetium, uh, sort of uh, inurin, for example, uh, is supposed to go through this channel, almost 100% coming, and no, uh, uh, it's a, just a grommet filter and goes through that. Oh, so, okay. But uh, inurin also, uh, just a, a certain very small, it's not 100 percent. There is no 100 percent glomerular agent. Just a, a little bit, uh, probably less than one percent, it goes to uh, tubular uh, sort of active secretion. So uh, uh, paratubular capillary is here. So it comes here and here, but some goes here and then tubular secretion. But there is also tubular reabsorption. Okay, and the uh, so uh, uh, there's a, okay. Uh, clinically, we measure still serum creatinine. Okay, but creatinine is uh, uh, also uh, generated from muscle metabolism. So creatinine level uh, is not totally reliable for estimating renal function. Uh, obviously the serial uh, study is certainly better, but one time point uh, measurement is not reliable mm -hmm. because of this. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, again limiting uh, glomerular filtration rate because of muscle, certain <laughs> females, uh, blacks has a, uh, this by equation, age certain old age is less mass. So it's of the effective GFR is less, uh, but the, uh, the blacks has a much bigger probably mass and female less. So there's some variation. Okay, so also we uh, measure the BUN, BUN. So usually BUN creatinine, even ratios of clinical we measure. But uh, oh yeah, this uh, usually uh, BUN creatinine ratio is about here. About 15 is the usual. So uh, if the ratio is low, you have to think about acute tubular necrosis. Uh, if it's a uh, high, okay, pre-renal condition, high protein uh, intake. And certainly uh, if uh, the ratio is high, also creatine is high, then uh, obstructive uropathy 
no other chronic disease you have to think about. But nowadays uh, we use a more and more cystatin C. Uh, this is a, a, a probably uh, is a freely filtered here. So metabolite in proximal tumor. So uh, uh, apparently this uh, system C measurement is not influenced by age, sex, or race. So this, uh, okay, this uh, system C uh, is now become um, popular because higher sensitivity, uh, specificity of renal disease, etc. So uh, uh, it's a lot of, uh, in the renal functions, a lot of this kind of aging, obesity, hypertension, or the uh, dyslipidemia, metabolic syndrome, heart rate, or whatever. And then inflammation, the inflammation triggering almost every disease. So seed reactive protein measurement is important nowadays. And, and certainly anything, any disease process, uh, seems to involve a genetic factor. So with this all together thing, the cystatin C uh, measurement uh, is affecting. So uh, there's a lot of studies show certain uh, 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 correlation or comparison between creatinine and cystatin C. And they all conclude that the cystatin C uh, has a better uh, sort of a measurement of renal function. Now, uh, 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 glomerular agent, uh, uh, we use a technician DTPA. Okay, in old days, uh, uh, this uh, EDTA or iothalamate, but uh, uh, now we are using technician uh 99m uh radio pharmaceutical uh in this three uh, DTPA mega 3 and DMSA the glucoheptonate behavior similar to the MSA but is no longer produced by the company uh, so uh this uh, the three are available uh, in old days in my days we use all this kind of uh, hippiran things uh, so, so uh, for measuring glomerular function, technetium 99 DTPA is the choice, okay? Because it, filt it is filtered by glomerulus in a uh, uh, 90, 95 percent, okay? But uh, this also actively secreted by tubules. Active secretion of uh, uh, a tuber is a major function of kidney, okay? Uh, glomerular filtration is a passive function. Active uh, secretion is a major function. Passive uh, filtration is second. Third is a uh, tubular reabsorption. That's a third function. Now, protectinate, technician protectinate is also a glomerular agent. However, it is reabsorbed uh, through the tuber. So we don't use, because it recycling, recycling. So background activity is so high with the protectinate. So we don't use that anymore. So uh, technetium uh, DTPA is an agent. Now the mega city is a heparin, is a tubular agent, tubular agent means that 80% of uh, given those is actively secreted by tubers, but 20% is filtered by glomerulus. But because of uh, technetium labeling, we can use a very high dose, like a 10 milligram. In this uh, I don't want to see uh, like this, we use uh, less than one milligram. So the imaging quality, the uh, uh, is not so good. So outline in kidney or things, it's not accurate. Okay. But with technetium or uh, mag, mercaptoacetyl glycyl, 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 this is a dimercap, uh, pentaacetic acid. Uh, so this uh, uh, is a filter uh, actively secreted, but no reabsorption. Okay. So 
using this one, we are basically measuring both, we can measure both glomerular filtration and also tubular function. The images are very good because of high dose technician. So we can do rapid dynamic blood flow study. With this one, you can do this. So dynamic flow study and then sequential. Every five minute imaging for half an hour will make a tubular secretion and excretory function with this one. So this is a main agent nowadays to evaluate renal function. But uh, if somebody asks to evaluate renal vascular hypertension, but catapril uh, interventional study, this is a choice because this is a glomerular agent. Uh, we are testing glomerular function. And so this is a choice. Now, this uh, DMSA is uh, also glomerular agent, but this uh, going through the glomerulus is about 80, 90%. This one is secreted by tubule relatively not more than this one, like a 10, 20%. So it stick uh, to tubules much longer and also the second tubular uh, active secretory uh, function is much faster than glomerular passive uh, function, filtration. So it stay in the cortex much longer, this one. That's why we, are, we can delineate renal cortical margin very clearly. So that's why this one is used to evaluate anatomy, particularly cortical uh, the margin, uh, particularly in children when we see uh, certain questionable hump, lobula, the DMSA is a choice to evaluate such things. Okay, here, the DTPA uh, versus uh, mega 3 this is a glomerular agent, this is a tubular agent, but image look alike. Okay. Now, in this uh, uh, zero to 60 second, this is a blood flow or time activity curve. The, uh, uh, anytime you study blood flow, you must use a very good bolus injection. Bolus mean, means very high concentration uh, of activity delivering fast. So unless you use a machine, many uh, departments use uh, nurses Nurses do not understand this uh, physiology, so they inject a little bit, little bit, little bit. Then uh, you cannot expect a good time activity curve. You have to have a rapidly rising peak and wash out. So this from aorta, this is a reference. This is not still good. Good one is a go up and down. But if this is fairly good. And then DTPA show peak, and this, uh, but look at that, uh, MAG, because of a tubular agent, it goes here, then stay here, very slowly excreting from uh, vascular system. But the DTP is uh, fast, but this reference uh, uh, curve is bad. Therefore, uh, this curve is even worse than idea but imaging you can see okay once you see aorta you must see kidneys activity that by you can uh, this is a posterior image so right side left side and then uh, you delineate uh, uh, kidneys well and then wash uh, so this is a sort of every four second frame so here uh, rapidly Okay, so uh, uh, if the intensity is similar, uh, you know, of kidneys and aorta, that means that renal artery is a patent, good renal artery patent. Okay, and then here, 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 if DTPA is cleared much faster, but the MA, this looks like an MAG, it stay here longer. Okay, now the MAG, okay, this uh, uh, Mercaptor still grass, grass. 
Okay, four seven is a maximum here, and you already see draining into the collecting system, and then uh, it's a washout. Uh, this is a before the Lasix. Now, important thing in evaluating uh, uh, renal function by the uh, radio pharmaceutical is the good preparation. Now, when I uh, visit a lot of department, uh, they don't understand this point. So, uh, if you uh, put the patient in supine position, supine bed, you're not gonna have a good, uh, you know, drainage. Okay, kidney is a uh, way back in the body, and then uh, ureteral pelvic junction is like a hump. So a patient laying down, the activity uh, coming down into pelvis and hard to go over that hump. So you have to erect the patient, sit down patient, and the camera should be in the posterior back. That's the most important physiologic uh, position. And then before you inject the right pharmaceutical, you must hydrate patient properly. Hydration uh, is about 1,000 cc drink and 500 cc saline injection. That's the idea. Then kidney is a physiologically functioning. That time you inject red pharmaceutical and image serially in upright position. Then you can have an etiquette study. But most studies in publication, all things are done in supine position. That's not the idea. So that's why this kind of image show all this activity hanging in the collecting system. It's not drained. You know, fast. Uh, but anyway, in this case, okay. Now here, uh, you can see kidneys, but the continuous accumulation diffusely without delineation of dilated collecting system. So the curve is a rising curve. This is obstructing curve. But obstructing curve, you have to think about either mechanical obstruction curve, urinary tract obstruction curve versus a tubular obstruction. Tubular is a sort of a inside the kidney, not the drainage. So uh, <clears throat> if you don't see this uh, dilated collecting system, that's a sort of a, a tubular obstruction. So that's uh, usually uh, nephritis. So in this case, you inject the Lasix. Lasix. Then, since the pathway is open, it should be drained because the Lasix inhibits the sodium reabsorption and also increase the peristalsis uh, of the ureter. So that way, uh, uh, this kind of agent can drain very fast. Mm -hmm. So this outlining, outlining has also a lot of problems. Okay, is a, a lot of issues. It's a cortical outline, a whole kidney outline, all kind of it's sort of a, a subtraction of background, all kind of things. Uh, but this curve should be like this, uh, sharply. Usually before five minutes, the peak. This is called venogram curve. And then if you draw the vertical line all the way and then halfway that's called t half time that should be okay less than 10 minutes in normal physiology mm -hmm. okay so now is a uh, in ct all dilated uh, renal pelvis or collecting system either nephrosis and the dilation of collecting system Okay, uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, prosthetic uh, uh, hypertrophy also can show all the uh, dilatation of ureter and then collecting system. And the, uh, so on in CT, uh, you can see all the uh, uh, dilated collecting system. Then clinician's question, is this obstructive? 
Oh, hydronephrosis. Okay. And the this uh, okay, you can uh, MRI and all dilated things. So if there's a obstruction means uh, some uh, blocking of uh, urinary tract. No? So uh, either intrinsic or extrinsic, or uh, there is a called non-obstructive dilatation. So non-obstructive dilatation is often due to uh, sort of atonic ureter. So ureter has to be actively peristalsis and then deliver the urine from pelvis down to bladder. But if a ureter become atonic, the peristalsis are decreased, then there's a retrograde reflux. Now, this can be seen in many patients with uh, bladder disease, bladder cancer, or a cystectomy patient. It's go go. Urine goes back up, then there's uh, all kind of inflammation, other things happen. So how that happens, and also if there is a chronic uh, sort of uh, extrinsic uh, compression uh, by the mass or a vascular band, a lot of things, then you have to become also atonic. That's called non-obstructive dilatation. So uh, this uh, uh, kind of dilated collector system could be obstructive or non-obstructive. CTMR ultrasound cannot tell. So this MR is uh, without injection, kind of you can compare to normal, you can see, or the blunting uh, pyramid, uh, these things, uh, collecting system, all the ureter. So if, the, if there's obstruction in right here distal, or this could be uh, non-obstructive dilatation. And so uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, courses, okay? And certainly uh, you know, acquired the malignant or or even retro pattern of fibrosis, uh, inflammation, infection, or all, all kind of uh, causes. Uh, so, uh, so in old days, uh, clinicians used a Whitaker test, Whitaker. Nephrostomy, using nephrostomy, they measured pressure, uh, the mercury pressure, after they infused something. Okay, so if there's a mechanical blocking, this goes up, up. Uh, so uh, they have measured certain things, uh, but this has shown no uh, advantage over our nuclear medicine uh, sort of uh, LASIK study. So uh, it's no longer used anymore. So in nuclear medicine, we have a uh, uh, serial imaging, and then computer uh, makes a time activity curve. This is a, a, a sort of a normal curve. Okay, rapidly rising peak within a five minute, and then T half is less than 10 minutes. Like that. But here's the obstructing curve go up. So at this uh, up, we inject Lasix. So if this curve goes up continuously, that's a complete mechanical obstruction. If there is a non-obstructive dilatation, the Lasix should uh, drain, the, so it's a fast here. If there's a partial obstruction in between, so I'll tell you how, okay, now. So this is uh, all the uh, 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 renogram curve analysis, all things. So we generate a T half, a right, left split function, all of that. Thing. But flow again, flow is, is this is not, uh, a normal uh, curve because of uh, a, uh, a suboptimal preparation as well as a uh, position of a patient. Okay, so this uh, kind of curve uh, we can make things. So uh, <clears throat> uh, in this uh, obstructive curve, complete obstruction is going up, going up. So uh, when we inject laser, it drain. This could be partial obstruction or non-obstructive dilatation. So uh, how we determine, again, T half. If the T half, this is a maximum, so it's a half time. So T half, if T half is uh, less than 10 minutes, that's a non-obstructive dilatation. But if uh, T half is greater than 10 minutes, that's a partial. 
It rains, it down here, but partial absorption. But if it goes up, continues, that's a complete mechanical absorption. Okay. So DMSA, as I mentioned, delineate the cortex nicely. Okay, but you stay in the cortex longer with, with the glomerular agent, the dimercaptor, succinic acid. So now with the specs, this is old, uh, but now specs is delineated very nicely, much better. Okay, here, so cortical certain scar defect or things. Compared to this one, you can see this old image, but still show this kind of defect. So, uh, okay, uh, now, as I mentioned uh, earlier, kidney has an important function of uh, sort of a, a balancing uh, important minerals, electrolytes. Okay, as you see here, uh, all kind of okay, uh, important sodium, chloride, or uh, bicarbonate, or I mean, everything. Uh, this uh, going through kidney it has a balancing uh, excretion, absorption, and such things. So uh, the, our uh, simple blood test can show certain normal uh, levels uh, uh, of this uh, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium. These are, these are very important things. And so uh, in arterial uh, blood uh, sample, we measure the pH. Mm -hmm. So it's a S balance, uh, balance. So S dosis versus alkalosis. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, if your body is S dosis, you have a higher risk for a viral penetration. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, according to some uh, study I read, uh, uh, Asians seem to have a less sort of a, uh, fatality or even infection with all SARS uh, or coronavirus because uh, Asians eat more or hot spicy food, which makes a more acidosis in our body system. So what is uh, uh, it's all dividing depending on uh, this uh, measurement of bicarbonate uh, things. So what we have a uh, all major four different categories. So in the chronic disease, there's always a metabolic acidosis. Okay, metabolic alkalosis also is there anything uh, you know unusually. More than necessary, it makes all trouble in our body system. So, uh, uh, measuring bicarbonate, uh, you can have uh, uh, this kind of differential things. Uh, so, uh, uh, if uh, any anyone has a decreasing urine output, then you have to worry about. Yeah, so it's a lot of acute renal disease, certainly due to all. Uh, contrast uh, toxicity, certain antibiotics uh, or chemotoxicity or some inflammation sepsis or certain uh, yeah, vascular problem that all makes uh, this one, okay. And, but certainly a lot of uh, like a, a very stressful sympathetic activation also makes uh, less than 400 cc per day. That's the definition of oliguria. Uh, so uh, uh, before too late, you have to. So uh, there's uh, first you have to think about any obstruction. So CT usually, and then also certain hemodynamic measurement of blood test or some uh, urine test and makes all this uh, uh, differential diagnosis. And then uh, in renal failure, we divide into pre-renal, post-renal, or uh, renal, okay? So renal means it's a parenchymal disease, including small vessel disease. A pre-renal is a major renal artery or vein, and post means a urinary tract, uh, that's kind of thing. But so these are kind of small vessel disease become 
more and more important. And certainly the tubular, the tubular toxicity or by drug, that's important. So uh, uh, clinically, uh, all uh, simple blood test and certain, uh, you know, electrolyte, uh, we divide uh, this uh, pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal, that kind of things. Uh, so uh, uh, again, there's uh, pre, intra, uh, post-renal, all that thing. So, uh, uh, in the glomerular uh, micro uh, vascular disease, uh, you know, this uh, vasoconstriction was vasodilatation and certain endothelial damage or things. Uh, but in the tubular side or other certain obstruction, but uh, apoptosis or thing. So uh, this or uh, influenced by oxygen supply. Uh, okay, so uh, in uh, acute uh, kidney disease, uh, basically uh, we still use uh, creatinine creat criteria and urine output criteria. And the uh, is a stage one, two, three uh, things, and that will make a, a sort of survival difference. And the uh, by urinalysis, uh, you also you can uh, classify into glomerular interstitial pylo or acute tubular necrosis. And the rhabdomyolysis when you are running or you. The, stress too much in muscles, and then you develop a, a elevated uh, a CK, and that then cause rhabdomyolysis, so, and then eventually kidney damages all the things. So uh, there's a sort of an energetic renal failure uh, is a common problem, interstitial nephritis, and then uh, make a papillary necrosis. The kidneys uh, become uh, smaller, smaller, so because of damaging. Uh, so uh, by uh, this normal size, it becomes smaller, smaller. It's all this uh, uh, bumpy contour and the smaller size and some calcification. And uh, so again, in clinics, uh, using all this uh, uh, sort of a laboratory test, uh, we make a differential diagnosis, calcium, protein, hemoglobin, or uh, you know, uh, anti-nuclear antibody, and this, this kind of things. Uh, you have to check when you interpret the renal study, uh, you have to know this kind of things. And certainly in differential diagnosis, again, uh, simple uh, blood test, urine segment, you differentiate it, basically. Uh, interstitial acute tubular necrosis uh, versus other uh, pre post renal uh, diseases. The ischemic uh, ATN uh, due to blood loss, fluid loss, and certain uh, vasodilatation, uh, you know, this kind of thing. And so, uh, uh, if you go to hot top bath, your peripheral veins are dilated. And so if you stay that kind of uh, thing, uh, conditions longer, you end up having uh, trouble with the kidneys. So you have to think about that kind of physiologic process. And so a lot of drugs, that's a major problem nowadays, or antibiotics, or the uh, you know, many, many uh, drugs uh, can be associated with uh, acute tuberculosis, including this uh, uh, the common drug, captopril, we are using, uh, also uh, Prilosec, we use, a lot of people use it for uh, gastroesophageal reflux, and dilantin also for uh, controlling seizure. So, uh, and certainly all antibiotics is a 
uh, abusing antibiotics is a major problem worldwide. And so again, there's a, a certain uh, uh, vascular problem and that affects the tubular effect and uh, causing all uh, renal functional damage. So uh, uh, it's uh, called nephrotic syndrome. That's including edema, proteinuria, and the uh, hypoalbuminemia. So measuring uh, serum albumin and you, uh, urine protein and clinical edema, that's called nephrotic syndrome. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a lot of different uh, now uh, approaches uh, to control. In old days, a steroid immunosuppression like a cyclosporin uh, things, uh, but uh, the uh, streptococcal pneumonia is also causing is a problem. And so it's a vaccination, other things uh, have tried and certainly uh, immune uh, suppression uh, uh, using some uh, sort of uh, T suppressor cell things uh, has been reported. Okay, so uh, uh, either normal volume or hypovolemia, uh, you have to uh, uh, restrict uh, uh, sodium intake and certain using uh, Lasix and some album infusion, that kind of things. So in, on this kind of uh, imaging, uh, uh, they all, okay, uh, you know, it's just the uh, end stage kidney is small, but otherwise uh, initially it's uh, like a uh, certain mass type things. Uh, so, uh, uh, Definition of a chronic disease is a uh, kidney damage more than three months and glomerular filtration is less than uh, 60 cc per minute for 1.7 square meter. Normally about 90, 100. So it's uh, this uh, less than more than three months is called chronic renal damage. Mm -hmm. So why uh, in this uh, again uh, using uh, GFR with uh, stage severity. Uh, it's a uh, sort of a, a uh, above 90 is normal, but uh, this uh, 60 to 80 and less than 50 is a renal failure that require. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, here is a uh, either transplant or dialysis. That kind of so uh, uh, diabetes is a major uh, cause of uh, chronic renal disease nowadays. Diabetes is so popular. And so this, uh, uh, so that's why, you know, it's a lot of people now days uh, on the uh, dialysis in the hospital. Uh, you know, the renal uh, disease, like polycystic, glomerulus is a relatively small percentage. Uh, hypertension is certainly next to diabetes. So this kind of diabetes, hypertension, and chronic disease, uh, you have to always think about renal diseases. Uh, so the, the symptoms are generally fatigue, uh, no, almost like a coronal virus infection similar to this one, or just decrease. Uh, uh, that the uh, coronavirus uh, also uh, damage kidney, uh, just like a brain things. Uh, that will make a uh, similar, all these uh, findings. Yeah, so, uh, so depending on what uh, kind of uh, uh, factor or uh, uh, electrolyte uh, certain balancing or diet uh, or this uh, it's all different types of uh, uh, you know 
uh, drug or things they have to use. So it was a good study uh, in this uh, patient is important to make a correct. Uh, so again, diabetes is a major uh, clinical problem nowadays. And the, uh, you know, end stage, it takes about 20 years, but it's starting very early. Once uh, the uh, blood pressure is uh, rising up, you have to worry about it. And certainly albuminuria is a common clinical problem. If there's any urine uh, show albumin, you have to control very, very uh, carefully in early stage before you see proteinuria or end stage renal disease. And so again, this a microangiopathy is a major problem uh, related to diabetes in kidney, brain, heart, every organ system. And the, so uh, uh, just a tiny vascular is a blockage or a leakage that causes all this kind of uh, problem, including dementia. So again, all the uh, mechanisms are all sort of uh, uh, related together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so diabetic nephropathy, okay, is a, a <clears throat> sort of microangiopathy. Uh, so uh, uh, medication things, I have to move faster maybe. Okay, here, uh, as you already know, uh, renal angiotensin system, you have to know, Okay, it's a, a renin is a produced in kidney and in the liver angiotensin uh, become converted angiotensin one by renin. Okay. okay, this angiotensin one is converted angiotensin two and the uh, that in uh, uh, the catapult is sort of uh, blocking this. Uh, and if there's no category, and you're saying two, uh, makes a vasoconstriction uh, in, okay. Uh, and so this adrenals also produce aldosterone. As you know, it's a aldosterone influence in salt water retention, increased blood volume and makes a hypertension. But hypertension also uh, relate to this uh, vasoconstriction. Okay, so that's a uh, that's a constricting in the renal afferent arterial. arterial. So it's uh, normal. It goes here only twelve percent filtered, but uh, in uh, there's a, a narrowing renal artery here, and if uh, there's a uh, if an arterial is also uh, narrow together, then the GFR is maintained. Uh, but otherwise, uh, this goes this way, then GFR will be decreased. So when you use a catapril, then uh, we expect us to decrease the GFR. So uh, this is a catapril, so you study using DTPA or MAJ3, but it's theoretically, principally, DTPA is better. Okay, so it's a complete uh, half an hour study. And then after you inject the uh, captopril, you study again. So if the, before captopril, uh, the curve, uh, renogram curve analysis looks like a normal in from both kidneys, right, left. But after captopril, one side, uh, this side is normal, but the other side show uh, quite a changes. It's a decrease or oh, there's a sort of extractory curve. So that means a GFR or oh, this uh, a uh, gourmet filtration is uh, reduced. So that's the side that would be in our vascular hypertension. Okay, so on the imaging, everything is uh, uh, symmetrical and then uptake fast and cleared. But here, after uh, this uh, catapult, 
Okay, uh, the left kidney is cleared, but the right side uh, up, up, up retained, a little bit clear. So that it is. So in that, uh, this uh, intervention radiology usually they do angiography study to see any narrowing renal artery or uh, renal arterial branches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's uh, again, uh, compared to this side, the other side is obstructing, vascular obstruction. So renal artery stenosis, the Doppler ultrasound can show, but the angio show ultimately, they show more details. Okay, so I don't have much time, I have to move fast. So uh, this uh, hyperperfusion can be now the ultrasound with a contrast agent can show area of a decrease of contrast enhancement uh, cystic lesion. <sighs> now on CT, okay, see, look at this uh, aorta. There's no contrast agent. So the contrast agent already washed out, but there's a quite a intense contrast to, in the cortex remaining. So washout excretory function is uh, uh, bad. So in the, the overall renal size is normal. So that's why this is a good renal failure. It's not excretory failure. Mm -hmm. So on uh, this uh, uh, venous phase uh, here, uh, you don't see any contrast. You should see at least collecting system something, nothing. So that, that also is a problem. Uh, small kidney, the um, medulla is okay, but cortex is thin, small kidney. That's also chronic renal disease. Okay, that's also right. All small kidney, bilaterally, all this uh, is a chronic renal disease. So hemodialysis uh, versus peritoneal dialysis, all cons, prongs. So MR uh, without even uh, injection counter, you can delineate our pyramids, uh, cot thin cortex, those are all MR. So MR has a lot of different techniques related to perfusion function, metabolism, all kind of things, MR, but MR is still not uh, real uh, practical. But after certain surgery things, uh, anatomy is quite a changes and ultrasounds, CT may not uh, show good information, but uh, certainly, uh, yeah, it's a uh, uh, contrast agent here is uh, retaining here. So this uh, interstitial nephritis or uh, acute tubular necrosis. Okay, this uh, uh, gadolinium normally wash out this uh, cis platinum is tubular. Usually platin is uh, toxic to tubular cells. And so uh, it's only cortex here, nothing in the collecting system. Uh, so uh, MR, certain technique, other things can show. Uh, inflammation, uh, using all this uh, 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 chemotoxic uh, toxin agent, uh, it uh, shows certain inflammatory portions. Now, the reflux, we can uh, still introduce uh, radionuclear into the bladder and then uh, observe any reflux here. Reflux. So, depending on how much is uh, ureter, renal collecting system up, is a uh, degree. And then uh, uh, finally, this uh, transparent kidney, okay, in the pelvis, uh, well, we can uh, make the same renogram curve and make the assessment. So most commonly acute tubular necrosis versus rejection is based on vascular abnormality. The acute tubular necrosis is related to tubular uh, obstruction. And certainly surgical uh, complication, most common lymphocele, urine leaking, that kind of thing. So we can easily evaluate uh, here. Uh, so uh, using a uh, blood flow, so rejection is a flow for a vascular problem. Um, ATN is more functional. So uh, this uh, uh, before and after uh, treatment, 
in uh, acute tuberculosis, necrosis, we use a Lasix to wash out or retain the uh, activity in the tubers, then uh, we know that things. And certainly, uh, MR, certain fancy imaging can show perfusion abnormality. Uh, also, this uh, show uh, leaking dispersed activity surrounding kidneys, so it's urine leaking. This, and certain MR can do same thing, leaking. Uh, lymphosis uh, is another uh, cystic lesion here. And CT MR can show the oh, urogram MR show uh, leaking. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the brain has a special connection with our heart, kidneys, uh, or the vessels. So it is a, all uh, contributing factors are all here. And uh, so this become hot topics uh, nowadays. Uh, gut, brain, always, always a connection here. So all kinds of diseases are connected together. So that's why gut system and autoimmunity axis. And this are uh, all the uh, microvascular multi-system diseases now called. So major to uh, brain, heart, kidneys, uh, all right. These are all connected with the same uh, pathology. Now, the last uh, related to renal failure is a sort of a secondary hyperparathyroidism, okay? Uh, that's uh, related to vitamin D or calcium, uh, uh, parasite hormone measurement. We, uh, if uh, calcium high, and parathyroid high, that's a primary hyperparathyroid. So the calcium is low, and it is high, vitamin D down, that's a secondary. Okay, there's a, a, a chronic certain that the renal failure disease often show so-called uh, brown tumor here, and the uh, bones are changing also. Now, there's a, a nephroencephalopathy. Uh, nowadays show all this kind of uh, white matter signal abnormality, just like a micro, this is a, a micro sort of a vascular disease. It's a tiny uh, thing, so we see often, and the certain uh, uremia patient often show this kind of white matter signal abnormality. Uh, in the pelvis uh, of female, you always uh, uh, look for, uh, as I said, it's a uh, uh, ovarian mass, a bladder here, uterus. It's a huge mass. When you see mass, what it is? Well, the ovarian mass is number one. Uh, benign, malignant, all things. And so it's a, a, a sort of a, a cystic things. It's a, quite a common dermoid cyst or a teratoma. Uh, that's a, uh, but it could be Malignant tumor on imaging, you can tell only certain uh, specific either fatty tissue or some hairline, certain things uh, makes a suggestion. Uh, and sort of a, this is a, a, a liver, you can see mass around this uh, peritoneal seeding of uh, ovarian cancer, which is common. Okay, so uh, it's a, a bladder rectum. Oh, uh, that's a uterine sort of a structure. It's supposed to be in female. This mass is a cervical cancer here. Yeah. Okay, uh, endometrium, endometrium, the cavity you see on density, but it's a vague hage. So endometrium, the MR is the best for endometrial cancer diagnosis. And some, this kind of, uh, some cysty. Uh, anytime you have uh, things, it's ovarianness or endometrium, certain. A uh, bladder here is uh, some diverticulum here. Bladder. It's anatomical variation. But the end, uh, your bladder wall is a little thickened. This is uh, seminal vesicles. Thickened, uh, you, uh, you know, this side is supposed to be you normal. Know, but when you're thick, you have to think about uh, certain mm, inflammatory or cancer. Okay. Nodular things, certainly cancer, bladder cancer things, nodular, uh, that's kind of thing. And so it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, prostate cancer was uh, diagnosed mostly because of uh, development of uh, PSA measurement in serum, but it's down, 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 but still much higher than other cancers. 
Okay, the uh, prostate also is uh, influenced uh, by this uh, uh, hypothalamic or oh, pituitary hormonal influence, routine hormone, all things. Yes. So with the uh, testosterone together. Mm -hmm. So uh, if uh, uh, the, uh, any man with uh, uh, impotence, they have to check uh, routine hormone, testosterone, and thyroid. Just the Viagra is not going to work if they don't check this, this. Okay, prostate is uh, uh, surrounding a uh, prostate urethra just below the uh, urinary bladder. And it has uh, three zones, peripheral zone here, and the central uh, zone or gland, and the transitional zone. Urethra is uh, right here. More 80% cancers are in the prostate, uh, periphery, peripheral zone. And then about 10-20% uh, are in this uh, transitional zone or central zone. So uh, this, uh, a, almost any uh, uh, adult male has uh, some hypotrophic changes, particularly after 40-50 here. So that's uh, impossible to separate the benign nodular hypotrophy versus cancer here. But uh, if there's any nodular here, that's most likely cancer. This is transaxial images, and this is a corona here, and this is a, a sagittal, of course. So this uh, uh, peripheral zone here, 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 that's the uh, area we are looking carefully. And uh, obviously, Gleason score, after pathologists have a biopsy, and they make a green score, zero to 10, above seven, seven, eight, nine is a high risk, very, Below seven is a, like a, mm, so maybe a benign type. So it's a watching. But seven, we have to study hard. A nine, ten usually show extra capsular spread of prostate cancer. PSA is a, a glycoprotein. Glycoprotein. PSMA is a membrane protein. It's different. Mm -hmm. But those are not specific. As you see here. Uh, many other tissues, duodenum, kidney, also many other cancers, renal, blood, testicle, colon, they all show PSM increase. So PSMA uh, imaging is not specific. So PSA also is a, a measurement. But any uh, rising or decreasing continuously, that uh, has a significance here. So uh, Eximin is a uh, Oh, it's sort of a, a, a synthetic leucine derivative, leucine. And like other amino acid, somehow this uh, synthetic is delivered by transporter. And then uh, phosphorate, and just like FTG, and stop. Uh, so uh, this uh, axiom. Oh, that's a commercial name. It seems uh, very valuable to evaluate the recurrence, small, tiny, uh, in the prosthetic bed. But certainly, a lot of PSNA MA antibody ligand, particularly uh, 1007 and new one, seems to also have a uh, very useful in evaluating recurrence. One metastasis. Only problem with the PSMA ligand is that it. Uh, excreted through the urinary system. So it's a lot of blood activity. This one doesn't show any blood activity normally. Uh, so uh, it's an ultrasound, transitional zone here, peripheral zone. In uh, elderly, peripheral zone becomes thinner, thinner, thinner. So that's why it's uh, uh, not easy to make a diagnosis. Uh, so MRI is much better. MRI to show like this. Uh, or uh, corona or uh, sagittal. See, this is a seminal vesicle. It's uh, because of fluid on T2 it shows nicely. And uh, this is a central zone and peripheral zone here. And so if there is uh, any uh, focal sort of decrease in signal intensity on T2 in peripheral, that's a cancer. Uh, okay, this uh, margin is, the, the, if this is a capsular extension, the word is about, so. So uh, this thing over here, but the tumor was also in 
uh, transitional joint here. These are all nodular hypotherapy. There's a benign prostate hypotherapy, but cancer is also here, uh, cancer. So uh, uh, here, here, a little bumpy, and this here, here, here. So anything bumpy now, you have to worry about that. And certainly it makes a staging, uh, uh, depending on how extent. So uh, mm, there's a, a uh, uh, it, on this uh, CT, uh, the substation contrast is not that good, but it's a bumpy here, you know, this is a tumor in the periphery. It's a, so or bulky here uh, involving me, seminal vegetal. But the MR, you can see much better, this central, sort of uh, hypotrophy, uh, kind of irregularity, but it's a little bumpy here. Is a, a capsular uh, break or not? Sometimes it's not easy. So we're using uh, uh, sort of a diffusion imaging. This ADC map show low signal here. Uh, in uh, ADC, uh, uh, the diffusion imaging usually show high signal. Uh, uh, not in any a high cellular mass, but the ADC map usually show upper the signal is decreasing. So sometimes we use this. <laughs> so here vaguely uh, decreased signal on T2. And the similar vesicle, unlike this side, they're all involved here, white. Right? So, uh, uh, so urine leaking after prostatectomy here, leaking. So that's a problem of surgery. Uh, but radiation also can damage the urethra. So this is a, uh, one of a common complications together with the uh, sort of a sexual problem. But uh, now with a robot surgery, makes much less complication. And also certain uh, computer assisted uh, radiation, focal radiation therapy also makes it uh, much easier. So, uh, mm, uh, a young uh, patient generally uh, takes a surgery, all the patient takes a external beam therapy, IMRT uh, nowadays for the therapy. And certainly a fluid collection after surgery, that's a lymphocyst. It's a lot of lymph node in the pelvis, as I said, uh, inguinal, external iliac, internal iliac, common iliac, that's the chain channel a bladder prostate cancer spread. Okay, there is a, a perirectal a lymph node, a presacral lymph node. A rarely, okay, prostate cancer, bladder cancer, ghost that also show. Mm -hmm. and so it's a lymph node show here, here. Less than one centimeter lymph node is normal on MRCT, but it can contain the tumor cells. So that's why CT MR is only by sizing, okay? so. Uh, uh, this kind of things. It's a bigger than one centimeter. It's a pretty sacral. Well, we know metastasis. Uh, but, uh, uh, okay, in nuclear medicine, we have multiple uh, agents uh, to evaluate the prostate cancer. Uh, FDG is useless because it's slow growing tumor, no activity. Uh, so, only maybe metastasis may show that. Choline. Uh, acetate is uh, fatty acid is useless. Uh, this become mm, uh, some uh, aggressive tumor may take, but useless. Methionine is useless. Uh, amino acid, but it's metabolized into forming a, a protein, but prostate cancer is not such an active tumor. Only this uh, leucine derivative, it's delivered but stop. So this uh, is very useful. Uh, uridine, uh, there's a thymidine, uh, nuclear, uh, but it's also useful because the signal is so uh, less. Uh, testosterone also useless. It's not working yet. So at this time, uh, PSMA and this uh, leucine derivative is useful. PSMA, okay, metastasis, uh, every agent metastasis show, but much aggressive uh, lesion. Primary is not there. So metastasis can be shown by any agent, FDG or whatever, but uh, primary is only PSMA and uh, leucine derivative. 
So PSMA, G3, they all show metastasis, but any agent can show metastasis. Okay, but the show this bladder is that's a problem. So recurrence just uh, around the uh, just lower uh, bladder is not easy. FCG only useful in the distant metastasis. Uh, now here, this is a PSMA derivative. Pilatify is a commercial name. It's a good agent, but again, it's so much GU activity normally is a problem. So PSMA, this is uh, still FDA approved, so it's good. But too much bladder and GI, this uh, kidney activity, that's a problem. Now this is a X-min study, uh, tiny little bit. These are all MRCT doesn't show anything, but it's a recurrent tumor. Uh, also, little, uh, uh, metastasis also show. So this uh, here, metastasis is uh, right, uh, recurrence right here on PSMA. Uh, this technician label all here, uh, spec. So this is the future, this kind of thing. It's much cheaper spec and show. Now, uh, uh, prostate cancer uniquely involving bone, mostly plastic, plastic. Uh, so it's a lot of, uh, influence, in fact, a particular uh, rancor is uh, a gene influence, but the cytokine and other things involved. So also blasting metastasis. Uh, so also blasting, we can see on CT increased density, but the, uh, uh, the about 20, 30% are also lytic, also lytic. A lot more uh, this uh, rancor gene together with the cytokine things. Uh, so, uh, I can phosphatase will relate to more osteoblastic, but we don't have, but now entelepeptide from blood or urine uh, is uh, related to osteolithic metastasis. That's a clinically is now used. So bone scan uh, used, Okay, and they certainly, uh, because of all the blastic healing we are seeing here, okay, also lithic, you don't see. Uh, so, certainly, uh, sodium fluoride pad, but, but compared to uh, MDP bone scan, uh, the uh, radio, higher radiation uh, makes us some um, helpful, but overall, it's the same. So PSMA show lots and lots of uh, metastasis, uh, but uh, our clinical focus is uh, detection of early recurrence right around the bladder. Uh, uh, certainly when you have a diffuse bone metastasis, we used to use a strontium-89, or uh, this directly exchange with the calcium, or uh, technician level EDTMP, uh, and, but uh, now uh, using rotation 177 or actinium 225, uh, we can have a uh, uh, good treatment uh, for the metastatic prostate cancer in the lymphatic system or bone together. So it's uh, our study show good response. So uh, we still need uh, a uh, early detection uh, of cancer. Certainly, serial uh, uh, checking of a PSA because simple or uh, it's a chip that's a serial, uh, but it's non specific. So, together with maybe certain gene or a certain specific antigen in the urine, also, uh, maybe more helpful in early detection. And certain uh, genetics, why certain people develop bone metastasis? We don't know yet. Why certain people develop recurrence fast? We don't know. So that's uh, all related to this kind of gene, uh, particularly SMED gene, that kind of thing. So, it's a, so they should study more this kind of uh, gene mutation for aggressive uh, 
uh, prostate cancer, we have to detect early. Now, so certainly prevention is ideal. Huh? So vitamin D, E, certain selenium, omega-3, all healthy food, uh, so important. And the uh, exercise, uh, balancing our good and bad uh, materials in our body system. The vaccine has been uh, uh, studied, uh, but it's a still uh, uh, you know, probably uh, far away from, from practice. And the, uh, uh, so we need a more uh, sort of a, uh, study on prevention of prostate cancer with aging process. Now, uh, once uh, we have a uh, recurrent metastasis, we have uh, hormonal therapy and chemotherapy. And it's a lot of now study of immune therapy as well. So certain uh, gene therapy uh, using his shock protein 90 or a pop gene therapy. That's also a study is now uh, working on research. So uh, I quickly reviewed all imaging, uh, basically, of uh, general urinary system with certain specific diseases. And uh, we still need a lot more uh, study. And uh, Einstein said that we have to learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. Well, that's what I feel the same way. So thank you very much. Uh, again, if you have any specific questions, and you can email me or you can uh, uh, send uh, uh, any comment to Professor So for the future reference. So thank you very much. I hope you keep continuously healthy and happy. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim. Okay. Can I have just a brief question regarding sure. the, the ob renal obstruction scan you have shown me? Okay. So in the previous, how were that kind of like 10 minutes or like 20 minute threshold, how were they uh, defined in the past? I have looked out through the like uh, our textbooks for that, but actually there are no comments about how those kind of times were defined at the first place. Yeah, that's a, that's a good practical question. Uh, in general, we usually run half an hour study for any uh, renal scan. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we know already uh, obstruction mm, from CT MR ultrasound, there is a, a dilatation of a collecting system or ureta or whatever, then basically we want to separate the mechanical obstruction versus uh, non-obstructive dilatation. So uh, soon after you inject uh, uh, either DTPA or mega 3 then you watch the uh, image or you make a curve nowadays uh, from the beginning. Then when the slope is going up or activity uh, quickly accumulating in the collecting system, without uh, any drainage uh, beyond the ureter pelvic junction, you can uh, basically uh, stop at 15 minutes uh, usually, and then uh, uh, you can uh, inject uh, uh, LASIK and then continue to save a time. But just 15 minutes doesn't make any uh, big uh, uh, difference. So, uh, I would suggest just to keep a uh, normal half an hour study and then uh, inject the LASIK and then repeat uh, another uh, study. That will make a probably uh, standardized technique. Thank you very much. 
Any other questions uh, from the audience? Hi, good afternoon, sir. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Sir, do you use, uh, do you uh, report the GFR uh, obtained from the machine? Yes. You report it, the Gates method. Or right. you, you also, or do you, do you also do the two sampling method for GFR? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, you know what? Uh, now, uh, gate method is simple, easy. Uh, but now, uh, uh, uh there is a, the clinicians uh, also obtain the, uh, uh, a GFR, effective GFR measurement uh, from the uh, blood test uh and calculating from creatinine view and together so uh uh it uh, is supposed to be uh, uh uh sort of correlated but uh they all uh, use uh, both uh, uh measurement yeah okay yeah so uh, uh but uh uh, then now we have uh, many uh, laboratory uh, maybe uh, results uh, to measure the uh, renal failure. So uh, uh, clinicians have uh, enough uh, maybe uh, uh, criteria, uh, but uh, uh, just uh, uh, following up those patients with the same criteria uh, to see the changes of the uh, disease process and also therapeutic response seems more important. But uh, as I stressed uh, uh, earlier, uh, good preparation, uh, like uh, good hydration and upright position uh, are the basic important things uh, in correctly measuring our uh, you know, nuclear medicine imaging studies. Okay, so, so you mean that the Gates method uh, obtained from the machine is, yeah. in, is yeah. in provided that you have good technique. On right, the, right. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, I okay. think there seems to be no more questions. And again, thank you very much. And actually, there is a chat regarding whether uh, email address of oh, what is that, Professor Edmund? Professor Kim. Oh, yeah, I, if it's possible, I will inform. Uh, can I inform maybe him, uh, your address, Professor Kim? Oh, my email address is uh, e, e, T like a David. K I M at yahoo.com. E E two E and T like a David. K I M at yahoo.com. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day.